Hello, people of the Warriors fandom, and random people clicked on this video despite not being in the Warriors fandom. What are you doing? Go somewhere else. <laughs> so, I just read through all the novellas in A Warrior's Spirit, Pebbleshine's Kits, Trees, Roots, and Mothwing Secret, so I just thought I would talk about them because I've got some thoughts. Um, Pebbleshine's Kits first. This was the one I was least interested in, and for good reason. It's not a bad book by any means. It's perfectly fine, but, like, it really didn't need to exist. Like, cool, we have Pebbleshine's perspective on this, and she goes through a nice little character arc, but it didn't really need to happen. Like, cool. It, it's here. It's not going to leave a lasting impact. The only really memorable thing about it was Micah appearing, who is in Mothlight's vision, and he's, he's baby. But, I mean... <laughs> That should say something when the only thing that stands out about a book is, you know, a cameo from from an older character. <laughs> so yeah, overall fine, but not very interesting. Now, Tree's Roots, on the other hand, I, I love this book. Little disclaimer before I talk any more about it. I've not read Squirrel Flight's Hope. I've only watched um, some videos about it. So this is literally my first time reading about the sisters. And, I mean, for an introduction to the sisters, it actually, like, I wasn't confused at all. I thought it was really interesting to see a group apart from the clans, and the way they function is so different and interesting, and it's really well done. And honestly, I forgot how much I really liked Tree. Like, I didn't think he was, like, that special in the last, well, obviously he was special, but I didn't like him that much in the last three books of A Vision of Shadows. I thought he was just, okay, cool. And then, like, when I read Lost Stars, I remember really liking him when he made that comment about, oh, just think bush in order to catch mice. So, like, really the broken code made him more interesting. So reading this book and seeing his backstory, it's actually really interesting. Like, he's probably one of the best, no, he is one of the best characters the Aarons have written in the newest series. Like, he has, like, his, his backstory, like, the way he's raised and with his, like, general nature... It, it aligns perfectly with the cat he becomes in the future. So, and some of it's on the nose. Like, yeah, it was his dad that taught him how to pretend to be a bush to catch mice. But most of it is a lot more subtle. Like, he, he has low self-esteem because he was forced out as a kit. You know, that was a... The, that, that's the only thing I knew about the sisters is that they kicked out Tom's because everyone made a big deal out of that. And I, it's a bit messed up, but, like... Most of the Toms were happy to leave. It was just Tree, and yeah, they shouldn't have kicked him out when he wasn't ready. But, like, but yeah, <laughs> anyways, um, with Tree's characterization, he's also, he was so scared of becoming attached because of how he lost his father and his best friend at a young age, and that was really important in Vision of Shadows. Like, he was going to leave the clans when they were like, in peril and not listening to him, and he didn't want to be, like, attached to Violet Shine, and I thought that connected very well. He's also, like, in the books, he's a lot more laid back and goes with the flow, because he just learned that that was easier and it made him happier. And the most telling thing for me throughout this book is how he's constantly longing for some kind of kinship, but he just can't get it. Like, when he meets Root, who he doesn't know is his father yet, he's just so happy to be talking to someone again, because... Like, he, he literally tried, like, after the sisters, like, tell him to, you know, fuck off and leave, and then they leave their old territory. Like, he, he like, follows them, because, like, yeah, they drove him out, but, like, he's just so desperate to be around someone. It was actually really sad, like, to see this, this like, he's, like, a little kid mentally. He, he really just wanted someone to be with, and it was, it made him really easy to, to sympathize with him. And it was always, honestly, like, this is what you need for a warrior's book. His relationships with, with other characters, like his, his father, Root, or his sister, Ice, and Stream, and Puddleshine, that's so much more interesting than fake, fake Star taking over the forest. Like, I'm so much more interested in the trials and tribulations of Tree than any other cat. Another interesting note, I don't know if this is in Squirrel Flight's Hope, this is new info to me, but his original name was Earth, which is probably even worse of a name than Tree, but um, 
because and then like because he was named that because of the sisters he he changes it and <laughs> the way he changes it he like his dad who he doesn't know is his dad yet helps him climb up a tree and they sleep in a tree together and then earth is like i want i'm gonna name myself after the tree that kept me safe at night and it's just that is just something a kid would do and it's kind of adorable <laughs> and i I knew both Root and Stream were gonna die. It's pretty freaking obvious when you read, like, how they're starting to get attached to each other, but, like, it's important to the plot, and personally, I thought Root's death in particular was actually really sad. Like, because it's heartbreaking, because right after, like, the last cat he really cares about dies, like, he just... He... Because he, he was... After, after his dad dies, and he had this longing for kinship throughout the whole book, he just ditches it immediately to be like, I shouldn't have gotten attached in the first place, because it only led to me grieving for him, just like Root said it would. And Like, it, it's actually a really good message by the end of the book, because he learns it's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. And that's a, that's a big theme of the book, I feel, is, like, kinship and, like, the different kinds of love, not just familial, but also platonic. And then, you know, later he finds romantic love with Violet Shine, but that's that's not really in the book. So yeah, this was a really good, like, this was just a good character story. It was really interesting to read his backstory, because, you know, this was a new group of cats for me with the sisters, but also just how he became who he was was a lot more interesting and well thought out than I really thought it would be. Like, yeah, this is my favorite book of the three. One of my favorite novellas out of all of them. Like, it's up there with Pine Star's Choice and Holly Leaf's story, personally. For me, at least. I don't know if other people feel the same. But yeah, that's my favorite of the trio. And now, last book was Mothwing's Secret, which I thought would be the best one, but Tree's Roots really took me by surprise. It was really good. But the Mothwing book was still really good. I always wanted to see her perspective on things because she was always such an interesting character to me and I always really I thought it was interesting to have an atheist character that wasn't a dick because you know Cloudtale or like a non-clan cat but here we get an atheist medicine cat and that was always interesting to me and it's interesting here to see in her her perspective like I mean I'm atheist myself and the way it's written in this book I actually really relate to her not even being able to bring herself to believe in Star Clan because how could it exist with all these terrible things that are happening? Like, like yeah, I, I, I just get that because I'm the same way. It's it's one of those things. But yeah, and her becoming a medicine cat was like it, it was nice to finally see a character that actually wanted to to be a medicine cat and had genuine interest in the job after you know Spotted Leaf's heart totally fucked up a lot of things, but uh, for the sake of this conversation, I'm only going to bring up the whole Spotted Leaf not wanting to be a medicine cat for some reason thing. Nothing else in that book. I'm sorry I brought it up. But, um, yeah, it was nice to finally see a cat that actually wanted to be a medicine cat. It's finally not being treated like a fucking fast food job. Just that job that no one wants. Like, why? It's, like, healing. What do you fuckers have against healing? You need it to survive. But yeah, anyways, that was nice, and it was good to see her perspective on the Hawk Frost situation. Like, this was all interesting, and I liked it, but one problem I do have with this book, I, I have a couple problems, actually, but my first one, it doesn't really feel like one book. It doesn't feel like a flowing narrative. The Tree book and even the Pebbleshine book had a very flowing narrative and, and a theme. This one had a theme, but it jumped around in time a lot. Tree's book kind of did too, but like, not nearly as much, I feel. Like, I, I don't know, that one, it, it was specific parts of his life. I guess this one was too, but like, I don't know, it, it felt, maybe because this one was more tied to the main books, it just felt, it kind of just felt like a string of scenes from other books that was just strung together and put in Mothwing's point of view, and there you go, you got a new book. It's just, 
I don't know. It didn't feel as thought out as the tree one did. Probably because nobody in River Clan has any character. Even in this book, like, the only characters in the book are Mothwing, Willowshine, and Hawkfrost. And Mudfur, because he was her mentor. And, I mean, Minotail had a character, maybe, for, like, a scene. I don't know. I like Minotail. She's one of the only modern River Clan cats with something, anything. But, God, even a book taking place in River Clan, in modern River Clan for part of it, can't make River Clan interesting. I don't. Maybe it's because it's a novella, they didn't have time, but, like, I don't know. And I mean, the focus of this book was where it should have been Mothwing's, like, deliberation with Star Clan and her becoming a medicine cat and, like, the whole. And being a medicine cat throughout the whole book. And yeah, I, I understand why they skipped over the whole Misty Star's Omen crap. Really, this book should have been written a long time ago instead of Misty Star's Omen because I don't know if I'm alone on this, but I really didn't like that book. It felt like it felt like it would have been interesting had it been in Mothwing's point of view. So this book was interesting and that one wasn't and there's even less of a point for that with that book either. It just kind of didn't really make much sense or was that intriguing. This one was a lot more interesting and I like how by the end, I mean, because, you know, she does get very, very clear evidence that Star Clan and the Dark Forest both exist, but by the end she's still like, it's not that she doesn't believe in Star Clan, she knows they exist, but she's got. But she, she's basically her mindset is fuck you, Star Clan. <laughs> like she's, she kind of hates them now. It's I don't know. I kind of I just kind of like that to be honest. I have no idea why. Like she went from oh I I just I don't know. I can't think that Star Clan's real. It just I can't really bring myself to really devote myself to this religion. And then by the end, when she figures out it's real, it's like. Wow, StarClan, y'all are lazy dickwads, and you let these cats die, and play with them like playthings, and you hate on us, and I don't know. I think maybe because I also hate StarClan, but I think everyone hates StarClan at this point. They're so full of shit. <laughs> so yeah, Mothwing goes from you're not real to you're full of shit. It's it's great. It's a it's a nice it's a nice character change. So overall, I liked a warrior spirit. Like, all of the books in here were well-written. I just like some of them more than others. Tree's Roots was, like, clearly the best. It had the best story. It had the most interesting characters. And Tree, I care more about Tree than any of the other, like, any of the main characters in recent books, I swear. And Mothwing Secret's second because it's, de it's definitely good. It's got an interesting plot, but I, I have my issues with it. And then Pebble Shine's Kits at the bottom, just because I don't really have any problems with it. It's just not that interesting of a story in the first place. I mean, they did the best with what they had with that one. And then the other two were the reason I bought the book. <laughs> but yeah, I yeah, it was a good book. And um, I'm looking forward to, well, A Shadow and River Clan first, because I haven't read it. It will come soon. I ordered it in the mail, but, you know, just look at the day this was uh, made for anyone who's watching in the future and is confused as to why the mail would be such an issue in the year of 2020, in the second half of 2020. I'm laying it on a bit thick. <laughs> so, yeah, that was my rant. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.